and seven to the pack in Hoosier territory, Philip Rivers. 25 TDs he threw for as the ACC Rookie of the Year a year ago to Willie Wright. 6-0 Wolfpack. Take a look at the catch by Wright as he hauls it in with one hand. Second quarter, Mike Tarika with a call. Cam Cameron said if he had one concern, it wasn't the quarterback situation, it was punting. Ryan Hamry punted last year, but in a tough, tight situation, and State's good on special teams, he was really concerned about getting kicks off. Tariqa all over it. Brian Jamison with a block. Troy Graham recovered. And then Ryan Hamry on the phone. Later in the second, Indiana punting from their 39-yard line. Hamry's punt. Uh-oh. Blocked again, this time by Brian Williams. The pack recovered. This would lead to a field goal. 21-0. NC State at the half. Third quarter, NC State looking to pull away. Rivers. 22 with 33. 243 yards. Three touchdowns. Impressive. Brian Peterson, NC State wins easily. Unlike last season, in five of their eight wins, they were either tied or trailing in the fourth. The Wolfpack take out Indiana without any nail-biting suspense. Phillip Rivers, who threw for more than 3,000 yards as a freshman, threw for those 243 yards and three scores. Two of those TDs to tight end Willie Wright. Because the library can only make you smarter. Thursday night college football, Texas A&M and Wyoming. First quarter, Joe Weber from a yard out. Giga Maggie's at 7-7. Second quarter, we're still knotted at seven. Joe Weber from a yard out, Gigamax. PAT no good, 13-7. Second quarter, it's Joe Weber from a yard out, Gigamaggies. 21-7 after the two-point conversion. Malcolm Floyd on the slant. Get tired of watching him, go ahead and tackle him. Touchdown, 21-14, A&M still up. Late in the first half, A&M trying to score again. Ferris, why are you not handing the ball to Joe Weber? Picked off by Brian Ellis. They go to the locker room 21-14. Fourth quarter, home teams climb to within 21-20, and Ferris drops back, finds, finds Dwayne Goins. Goins, Goins, gone. Touchdown for Texas A&M. Aggies barely escaped at home in their opener against McNeese State, but go on to win it 28-20. They're now 2-0 and getting ready. Emotional game for Northwestern. Napoleon Harris said afterwards it was pretty emotional. I know Rashidis was looking down on us during this game. First quarter, scoreless, Zach Kustak. Hit by Russ Dalton, and we have a Matt Moore helicopter-type situation. Kustak would score on the next play. Now third quarter, 9-7 Northwestern. Kustak again, Northwestern 67 rushing yards on that drive. They had 63 rushing yards in the first half. 16-7 Northwestern. Now 30-14, fourth quarter. Jason Thomas scrambles, looking for Michael Johnson. That track career went well. Now he's at UNLV, out leaps Marvin Brown for the TD. 42 yards after a two-point conversion. UNLV down eight, late fourth. Now 37-22, fourth and goal from the one. Knee down, ball not across the plane. No touchdown. Randy Walker can celebrate. Northwestern is a winner. Kustak runs for three, throws for two. Damian Anderson runs for one. In Wisconsin, always tough at home, and seemingly they were just going to pound the Bulldogs. Anthony Davis went for 137 yards in a big run here, right? Yeah, they talked about speed all week. Fresno State, Wisconsin showed some speed of their own. Sorgi gets the sneak over for the quick touchdown here. Made it 7-0, but David Carr would answer. Beautifully thrown ball to Marque Davis, and we are tied at 7. Wisconsin now back on the move. Lee Evans, who had 168 yards receiving last week. Boy, did you see Sorgi take it in the mouth? Delivers it to Evans. Seven catches, a buck 82, 14-7 Wisconsin. They would make it 20-10 at the half. Opening kickoff of the second half. Bernard Berrien logs on. And he is part of the Gone Network. 96 yards, he had 300 all-purpose yards. Magnificent execution by the special teams. He never got touched on the play. And how about a little defensive back play after a two-point conversion made it 20 to 18. Tyree Sam's right. Oh, no help from the receiver. Lee Evans doesn't come back. Sam steps in front. Momentum changer complete now. Fresno State was feeling it, Reese. And then Carr would find Rodney Wright, the reigning WAC player of the week for his performance against Oregon State. He gets in the house. Another two-point conversion made it 26 to 20. Carr went 22 of 38, 240 yards, and Fresno State does it again, 
32 to 20. They blistered Wisconsin in the second half. Well, they did. Their receivers did a great job of getting yards after the catch. Wisconsin played soft, but they made them pay for that by not letting them make the tackles on them. And their motto on defense is just shut up and hit someone. In the second half, they did. They shut out Wisconsin, scoring 22 on offense. Didn't let Wisconsin get a sniff on deep on, on offense. And remembers every single play of. They played a classic in South Bend, but early on, Nebraska was taking control against the Fighting Irish in Lincoln. Darren Diedrich plowing in for the touchdown. 7-0. Only four fumbles lost, only eight turnovers last year for Notre Dame. Not that way in this game, Rod. Yeah, they coughed it up right away deep in their own territory. Nebraska taking control when they get the ball back, Reese. It looked like Notre Dame was going to be out of this game in a hurry. Terrence Howard gave one up, and then they had a terrible snap on a punt. Nebraska would recover that as well. Turned it into a field goal, and just like that, the Huskers had a 17-0 lead. Notre Dame in its next possession, third and 13. Matt Lavecchio throws the pick. Juan Gross picking it off and going back the other way. Now, Nebraska would fumble on the next play. And Bob Davey, this is a team that we talked about leading into this game, had to be as mistake-free as they were last year. Four turnovers tonight against Nebraska, just eight in 2000. Eric Crouch, meanwhile, did somebody say something about him throwing the ball? Tracy Wistrom getting loose, a big tight end. Nebraska uses the tight end very well, probably the best thing they do in the passing game. And then it's Diedrich going in again. Oh, power running inside. You talk about the option, people forget about the power style of play Nebraska has. Notre Dame found out about it tonight. 24-3, Notre Dame going to Carlisle Holiday at quarterback, and he is picked off by Willie Amos, Mark. And the turnovers were the major part in this game. Even though this was later on in the game when Nebraska had a comfortable lead, Nebraska was still ball hawking and going for the interceptions. On the next series, Nebraska with a fourth and one. They're going to punt this thing. Shane Walton storms through there, blocks the punt. Notre Dame with the ball inside the five. Took them a while against that black shirt defense to get it in there, but finally from a full house backfield, Tony Fisher going to crash into the end zone, step in there, eluding a tackle nicely. 27 to 10, last ditch attempt, and Lavecchio tries to get it to Javen Hunter, but the Nebraska D all over him, and the Huskers roll in this thing 27 to 10. The Huskers now 84 and 3 at home over the last 13 years. Well, and they look like a team that had played three straight home games for song, apparently. Must have inspired Marquise Walker. He had a huge game against the Huskies. Blocks a punt here out of the end zone. It's a safety, and the Wolverines up 2 nothing on Washington. Second quarter, it's 3-2. Cody Pickett making his debut as the Husky starting quarterback, looking for the freshman Reggie Williams. Oh, and Reggie Williams looked a little bit like Randy Moss. Long, rangy, making big plays, taking the ball away from guys throughout the day. Set up a field goal, made it 6-2. Now Navarre looking for Walker. A school record, 15 receptions. Michigan up 9-6 at the break. It's the offense of Washington trying to get this thing back. Again, he's looking for Williams. Yep, once again, looking like Randy Moss. Put it up there, let him go get it. If he doesn't lose his shoe here, he probably gets into the end zone. On one shoe, Reggie's still pretty fast. The offense fails to cash in. Second and goal. Pick it a little screen out there to Rich Alexis. A little bit high here, Mark. Yes, yeah, so he takes a little bit off this pass and gets it down. It's going to be a big play for the offense. And then pick it on third and goal. Wrapped up. Freisinger with the sack. Eight-yard loss. He'll settle for the field goal attempt. And John Anderson told me it's leather. High enough, long enough, not straight enough. He missed it. Now down to special teams. Washington had to rely on him. Check out Omari Lowe, Mark. Comes off the edge, blocks the kick. And his teammate, the other cornerback, picks it up. I can smell what the Rock is cooking. It's Rock Alexander down the sidelines for the score. 71 yards, 13 to 12. New Heisel suddenly instead of down 15-6, up by a point. And on the next drive, it is low, coming up large again, Rock. Oh, why put your offense on the field when your special teams and defense can score 14 points in the fourth quarter like this low coming up with the pick? And on the onside kick attempt after Michigan cut the lead to 23-18, Paul Arnold, an injury. Troubles. He's bounced around positions, but he comes up with the ball there, and New Heisel's Huskies win it 23 to 18. And how about this? New Heisel's 19 wins at Washington. 14 have come from behind. Nine in the fourth quarter. Five of those coming last year. Kansas State and USC, of course, the Wildcats getting all kinds of grief about their non-conference schedule, playing a name opponent. L. Roberson pitches it to Josh Scobie. Doby, do. Fumbles the ball, but oh, Nick Leckie's always there. The offensive lineman's there. Johnny on the spot. Offensive lineman always around the ball making big plays. SC punting. Troy Polamalu with a big knock. 
Have you met Aaron Lockett, Troy? I think you have. Later in the third, SC down 10 0. Sewell, Tam McCullough, strong running inside. SC on the board at 10 6. Later in the fourth, Carson Palmer trying to rally the Trojans. You see, getting close to two and a half. Palmer running it, and he gives up the football. Henry Bryant is there to recover. And Kansas State, they go on the road and they beat SC 10 6, the final good solid win for Bill Snyder's crew. Well, obviously, they have another strong defense at Kansas State. USC still struggling to learn the Norm Chow offense. They couldn't get it done today, but Kansas State really getting after them defensively. And for Bill Snyder, he was concerned about his front seven of the defense because they're basically new to this unit. This is the front seven that saved the game for Kansas State in this game. Holtz and the Gamecocks between the hedges. Holtz, only two SEC games on the road against Vanderbilt and Kentucky. The opening kickoff, the master motivator apparently said something that got Derek Watson's attention. Yeah, Derek Watson got off right at the beginning of this ball game. He would continue if he had just been able to stay in bounds there, Reese. He had six. It set up an Andrew Penning touchdown run. It's seven to six in the fourth quarter. The only touchdown South Carolina was able to get. And then Watson gives up the ball. Bruce Thornton, the former tailback, picks it up. Georgia in business. They had to settle for a field goal. It's a 9-7 game. Now, South Carolina deep in Georgia land, still 9-7, waning moments, third and 10, and Brian Scott out fights Thornton for the ball, scores the touchdown, and South Carolina wins it by a count of 14-9. The guys really struggled in the end zone, they, in the red zone. They couldn't score, Mark. And that's the key. If you get the ball in the red zone, you have to come away with something, at least three points, and these teams weren't executing well in the red area. Game a couple of times. Cedric Cobbs with just a brilliant run, Mark. Outstanding cutback at the line of scrimmage. But what's impressive, he makes people miss down the field to play. And his own blockers really getting his way. Two to score. Tennessee stiffened. Arkansas had a field goal. They had a 3 0 lead at the half. Tennessee still trying to get things going. Travis Stevens bursting up the middle. Tennessee had a first and goal here. And since we're still in the second quarter, you see I've foreshadowed what happened. Second and goal. Travis Stevens gives up the football, and the Hogs are all over it in their newly refurbished house there in Fayetteville. In the fourth quarter, after a 16-yard punt from the end zone, Alex Walls sort of ricochets one through there to tie the game at three, and then Walls would add another field goal, and then this. Travis Stevens bowling his way in from the three in the waning moments of the fourth quarter. They're under a minute to go, and Tennessee... Appears to be in control of this game now, 13-3. The score in that one, the Vols are going to head down to Florida next week, guys. Well, neither team had much offense in this ball game. No passing game for either team, so to speak, which is going to be a problem for both these teams later. Here, they paid tribute to him, Texas giving him a moment. The teams came out and played well early. Corey Redding picking off Ronald Curry and, and another flip. Up and over the top, but he's got to land down his feet. He's got to stick it at the end to get the points. It's 7 0 Texas. Now it's 14 0 when Curry shows a little bit of that skill and made him such a highly touted quarterback. Nice run into the end zone, made it 14 7. But Texas really got it going in the punt return game with Nathan Basher, who set a school record with 153 yards on eight punt returns. Well, take a good look. This is really the Texas offense today. They use the special teams and the defense to shut up the short field, which gave Chris Sims a chance to get something done, because otherwise that offense really sputtered drop passes and poor throws. Yeah, Sims was under 50% through for just 167 yards, but the bottom line, Texas 2-0 for college. First quarter, BC up 7-0. Luke Powell runs past BC. Luke Powell taking off in the kicking game, Stanford in his first game making a play, 47 yards here. Little skills there, Stanford playing the first game. BC having their second game where Willie Green was a dominant guy. They were shutting him down today. Randy Fasani is back, he's healthy. You know, the Cardinal averaged about 30 points per game in his eight starts last year, just seven when he wasn't in there. You see he's using his strength, breaking his tackle, and finds Nick Sebas for the touchdown, tied it at seven. Then Fasani again looking for Ryan Wells. He beats the Eagles deep, 46 yards, and Fasani providing offense for Tyrone Willingham. That play was set up by the fake run because the running game was good for Stanford early. Fasani found his man wide open. William Green had a huge game in the opener against West Virginia. Stanford's been able to keep him pretty much intact so far. Only 39 yards on 14 carries. The Cardinal up 21-10 in that game. Oregon State and New Mexico State as we check in on this one that we told you about a little earlier. First quarter, it's scoreless. Jonathan Smith. It's that pass tip, knocked around. Sadiq Shabazz hits it in the helmet, and James Henson's going to end up making the catch. That's using your head. Yeah, he, he's got to be heads up to play this game. Ken Simonson, who was bottled up by Fresno State, 
pays for it, but scores a touchdown to make it 7-0. And Patrick McCall, who spells Simonton, busting tackles, 23 yards. McCall's first touchdown of the season. It's 14-0. The Beavers look as if they're about to cruise, but oh, not when you got Kenton Keith going in untouched. Two-point conversion would fail. So we're sitting there at 14-9 at that point. Oregon State got us scared. New Mexico State really played better than an 0-3 star, but they fall to the Beavers 27-22. They definitely did. And the question about Oregon State, when is this team offensively going to come alive as they did last year, posting big numbers on the scoreboard? Utah and Oregon. Oregon has been alive offensively. Joey Harrington looking to push that home winning streak to 22. Last time they lost a non-conference home game, it was to Utah. And it is Joey Heisman looking for Keenan Howrier. Why not? not well, I would look for it. Receivers in the Pac-10, wide open there. If why, if why not? That's a good enough reason. Harrington stumbling in the end zone a little bit, gathers himself, finds Jason Willis, picks up 35, and on the next play, Harrington. Oh, a little trickeration out of the Bilotti bag. Paris Warren. Oh, Paris got a little arm. Justin Peel. Peeling down the sideline. Couldn't quite make it into the end zone. Mo Morris took it in on a three-yard run. Oregon 16-10 at the break. They missed the PAT. And then Harrington hooks up with Howry. Why not? Why not? Look for him again. This time they made the two-point conversion. Make it 22 in a row at outs. And Oregon wins it by a count of 24 to 10 success or something trying to get the Jayhawks going second quarter first and 10 from the 49 and Corey paused and Corey did this against Alabama found a wide open tab Perry worked again against the Jayhawks UCLA was cruising keep your eye on the arrow that's Craig Bragg he's going to go one way and then go back the other way he goes in motion where's the defender that's supposed to shadow him he takes the reverse and goes down the sidelines and here he turns the Jets on and runs through the Kansas tacklers into the end zone made it 34 10 then Deshaun Foster went for a buck 79 I don't know why people don't consider him the top back on the West Coast. He is really that good. He's a power runner and a finesse runner when he needs to be. He could be better than Ken Simonton. Oh, I, I was just going to ask that. you. <laughs> 179 yards on the ground, 41 yards in reception. UCLA wins easily over Kansas, 41 to 17. FSU, they won 35 in a row at home. It's 6 0. Chris Ricks flips. Lands on his feet, but he falls. He doesn't get the perfect 10. He still gets a 9.6 for me. If he sticks it right there, he brings home the goal. Bobby Bowden says, Rick runs a lot of plays we don't have, and he usually ends up flipping. He ends up flipping here. Look at his arm strength. This is why they don't mind having him improvise a little bit, finding Tom and Gardner. Oh, that's a nice arm. If they learn to use that thing with a couple of inexperienced receivers, they got a chance to put points on the board through the air. They put 29 on the board against a very good and underrated defense from UAB. 29-7, the final Watson Browns team acquitted itself quite well, but they fall, and Florida State sets up its showdown next week with Georgia on Miami, Ohio, a team that played Michigan tough last week. Kyle McCann, who'd already thrown one touchdown pass, now looking for Khalil Hill. And the thrill is in the hill. The man's son is doing it himself, splitting two defenders. Nicely thrown ball. 17-0 game when Ben Roethlisberger gets up close and personal and is greeted by Aaron Campman. Hawkeyes led 24 to nothing at the break in the third quarter. McCann now looking for Dallas Clark. Sort of a little comfort throw there, Mark. And it's not just the throw. It's what he does after the throw on the catch. He gets to the outside, turns the corner, and turns it into the end zone for the score. Well, Dallas did that once. Let's see if uh, we've got some more from Big D. Great Clark. hands. This time he takes it from the outside, cuts to the inside. They just can't tackle the big fella. He's just rumbling into the end zone again. They put 51 on Kent State. They put 44 on Miami. More than Michigan put up. 44-19 the final. McCann was outstanding. A career high four touchdown passes. Another team that falls into that category. This one out of the max. Already won a game over a Big Ten team. Toledo beat Minnesota, and then they did it to a Big East team. A Big East team through 2004, I might add. Toledo handling Temple 33-7. Chester Taylor going for 99 yards and Gary Croton Gary Croton is putting the boots to the throat Gary Croton's team you see Brandon Dolman completing a pass out here and Marino Mahi going into the end zone and it's 44 to 16 BYU laying it on for you Akron Ohio State that's Jim Tressel first game as OSU's head coach Jonathan Wells gets the handoff slips a couple tackles 7-0 Buckeyes, 119 yards for Wells. Steve Belisari rolls out, lobs it downfield. Off John Fuller's hands right there, right to Chris Vance. Buckeyes win 28-14, Steve.